It was awful. I was crying. <laughs> and I told him I couldn't take care of him. I must say, I, I was getting a little teary-eyed talking about it. But then you have to look at my background. People have not accepted me. Well, you do have an insight because your skin is darker. You have lived through a lot of prejudice yourself, probably. Yeah, definitely. Even demonized, there is a percentage of people that assume something horrible about me. To find somebody that's just as open as you, it's beautiful. It's what every child wants in their parents to accept them just as you have accepted me. What was it like being gay back then at that time? It was the most wonderful time in my life. I had some stuff in drawers around here that I haven't even looked at for years, but I, I have I have films on a lot of this. John Raines saved some of the rarest artifacts in the world, the moving images made by LGBT people. I feel like I'm bringing these people back to life. And what better thing could you do in the pursuit of history, right? They are so rare because gay people were so invisible for so long. I mean, you just haven't seen them really existing. <laughs> Fiction films are wonderful and they're very powerful in their way, but they're not real life. Home movies are real life. It, and it's, it's real life that would be our life. Those are the lives of our people. And that would be, have been our life if we'd been around at the time. They share space among the more widely used papers at the GLBT Historical Society in San Francisco. Not just home movies, but shows on TV people felt were important to save. Police repeatedly swinging their nightsticks, striking at gays standing in front of Elephant Walk, a popular homosexual bar on Castro Street. Community productions that they made. Gay people, as other minorities, are uh, finding new ways to express their identity. Mama, dear mama, did I spoil your dreams? Gay people at TV stations even saved raw footage of news stories. Our relationships are as emotionally and economically valid as any traditional marriage. They constitute the home movie of an entire community. There are very few things that can tell us more about a people than the way they documented themselves. Scott Smith, could you please come up here? Words tell stories. Photos capture moments.
But only film lets us be in this picket and feel these eyes on us. It moves. Moving pictures move. And I think the way a person moves tells us at least as much, if not more, about that person as their appearance in a photo. You have to search for a projector or a player that still works. You have to get a cassette to open and metal tape to thread past an electric eye and around rubber rollers and across a spinning magnetic head. And if nothing has burned or broken and you hear a ka-chunk, a full body experience. Watch it, buddy. You're on tape. Get him out of the room. We can hear them speak. We can see them move. We can feel like we're in the scene as the parade moves past us, as the protesters march by us, as the police come and grab someone off <laughs> to our right. There's the feeling of the uncanny, right? What, what was gone is that. Film has a poignance that nothing else can touch. There's something very real and very visceral. But they didn't have the cloud, only their closets. Hundreds of tapes. I don't know, is it gay people like to make tapes? <laughs> is there anything you wonder about? Why, why is there so much? I've already transferred about a thousand hours. There is that much more left to go. And sometimes it's quite a challenge to figure out what I'm looking at. And then I learn something about history at the same time. This home movie is being collected at dozens of places around the world. Some are very small. We have here all the archives of the Latino GLBT History Project. Others are places that everyone has heard of. We have a number of home movies at the Academy that either were shot by somebody who was LGBT or have images of people who were LGBT. But in this home movie, important scenes are missing. Pride parades were when everyone took out their cameras, right? And so we have a lot of Pride Parade footage, which of course is valuable. Phyllis Lyon and Del Martin, founders of the Daughters of Miletus. What we don't have so much of are people's everyday lives. You never look better. You never look better. And those are the things that people don't think to document. And if they do, people, other people don't think to save. I'm guessing we'll find home movies of people having commitment ceremonies long before gay marriage was legal anywhere, and we'll feel proud that they, that they just went and did that. It's out there. I know it's out there. It's just a matter of collecting it, and yeah, I, I mean, I can't wait to see these home movies. But it's much more likely that they will be destroyed first. It's more endangered than the usual home movie I'm sitting in someone's attic. It's more likely to be discarded. It's more likely people will be uncomfortable with it. And that's the step at which we lose a lot of stuff. Bill Bell, Amador Gonzalez. A gay activist had died of AIDS, and he had been very meticulous about collecting his activism. Robert Handel. His family had thrown it in a dumpster. Steve Yet it's the LGBT experience that offers the newest layer of insight into who we are as a people. Every single LGBT person has a, an incredible story. It is a story of struggle and resilience and victory over incredible odds. They're fascinating. What's going to happen?
happened to all this stuff? People won't know what these things are, and they'll be just in a dumpster, I'm afraid. My father, his brother had had an affair with Ramon Navarro, who was a big movie star back in the 20s. And there were all these letters and pictures of them together. At, when he died, I didn't know what to do with him, and I threw him away. And now, of course, I realize I threw something that was so valuable. Our history is so valuable. And I'm afraid that, you know, if somebody gets a hold of these things, they don't know the value of it. And that was me. I mean, I just, it was just an old picture of a, of a guy. There's a home movie that was shot in about 1950, and it was shot in San Francisco in a lesbian bar, or a, I should say a bohemian bar, as it would have been called at the time, called Mona's Candlelight. We don't know who shot it. It was found at a flea market by an archivist who told me about it because he thought I'd be interested. Of course I was. This particular home movie has a soundtrack the level of the sound is kind of low. But to be able to hear it at all is pretty fantastic. And uh, I was just blown away when I saw that film. I, I have to say my heart was actually pounding when I was watching that film for the first time because this is 1950. This is a lesbians in a bar in 1950 listening to lesbian singers. And one of the one of the women who was singing in this bar was wearing uh, a man's suit and had lipstick on. You see some shots of the crowd who were dressed in a very butch and very femme clothing. And I just looked at that and I thought, you know, that's where I would have been. That would have been me on Saturday night. I would have gone to that club. I would have been listening to those singers. I would have been checking out that crowd. That would have been my life. And I'd never had that feeling before. There are a lot of good feature films, documentaries where people have meticulously gone through and found still photographs. But to see that film, it just brought it to life in a way. I've never seen anything do that before. And that's the strength of home movies. There's just, there just is pride in that. There's pride in feeling that your people exist even, <laughs> and much less in that way. There's this really remarkable collection of home movies by this guy named Hal, Hal O'Neill. He started documenting you know, his life when he was a teenager. He was an orphan. He was growing up in an orphanage. Films were this big outlet for him. He knew that he was gay as a teenager. And you can kind of see early on this sort of like, you know, you know queer eye for the world. He documented things in his own life, things that were just important to him.
But then as he got older, he documented dinner parties or weekends with friends. Or, you know, nightclub performances, drag shows. Just details of a gay life. It's a remarkable document of something that often goes unrecorded. But one of the things that Hal's movies show us is that, you know, people had a really rich, happy, satisfying life. They could. It's not the image of, you know, life inside the closet that, you know, people who grew up in the more recent past would have expected. I mean, it shows us that people find happiness and meaning and commitment in their lives, you know, whatever the circumstances. Al certainly had that. He seems to have had a really good life. I think there's something like 400 reels of film. We looked at probably less than 10%. Now John Rains will transfer the rest. I'm so happy that I found this film. I, I can't tell you. If there's any question that a gay person can be a good parent, I think this partially shows that we can. That we can have I was introduced to Bill through an administrator at my university. I'm so honored. As soon as I heard Bill Jones' story, I wanted to interview him. But I am the first single male in the United States to adopt a child through an adoption agency. Next question. Next question. Uh, let's see. So He's 86, and no one has documented his place in history yet. I was terrified that anyone would know I was gay. I had to do it as a straight man. I had to lie. It's hard for somebody to understand how bizarre this was in 1968. There were no single adoptions. It hadn't happened yet. And there certainly weren't any gay men that were openly taking care of their children. But it was just like so many things. I mean, until 1967, in certain states, you, you couldn't have interracial marriages either. And so, you know, to have a single person take a, a child was just absolutely unheard of. He could be anyone's neighbor. Treasures just as compelling wait to be discovered in almost every neighborhood. I just assumed that you were lesbian because you are so open-minded to everything in my life. I identify as an ally you know, what you did paved the way to see the television shows that we have today and paved the way to see billboards with same-sex couples or a father and a son who look nothing alike, but you can see them and say that's a family. Yeah. Bill became the first single man to adopt a child at about the same time that Lily Vincennes had her movie camera down at Freedom Hall in Philadelphia. 